Hey everybody, it's Caleb here. Once again, we're going to be working on my DIY Shape Oco 3, and today I got the Z axis done and also mounted the X axis since it's all kind of one component. So, the first thing I did with this project is I pretty much planned out and designed the upper and lower bearing mount plates. Pretty simple concept there. Uh, there's not that much really, just a place for some bearings to sit in and a place on the top one for the motor to be mounted to. Overall, I think it took about three hours to mill out both of the parts on my little X-carve and I think they turned out really nice. The next thing I had to do was cut down the 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter extrusions uh, to size and make sure the ends were squared up properly and then it was just a simple process of drilling and tapping the extrusion and rail so that I could mount up the rail to the extrusion. So essentially the z-axis consists of a simple list of parts. First you have the two bearing mount plates, then the two extrusion slash rails, the drive screw, bearings, lock collars, the lead knot, pulleys, spindle mount assembly. Put all that together and presto you have a z-axis. All right, so before we put this on the machine, I just wanted to talk about a couple of different things. One, you can definitely see right here that I've got uh, quite a lot of spacers in there. I've just used some quarter inch spacers and then uh, a couple washers to kind of fit between the lead nut and the mounting plate here. And I'm not going to leave that as permanent. That's a temporary solution as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to make up an aluminum spacer, I think, to fit in there. It'll be a lot beefier. I think it'll work out pretty good. The other option to solve that problem uh, with that spacing issue is to make a new plate that just goes up and around here then pushes the drive screw and lead nut up a little bit so that it's lining up properly with the end of the mounting bracket. I kind of think I like having the drive screw down and away from everything so that there's a little bit more clearance so I think the best answer for right now anyways is to just make an aluminum spacer that's a little bit beefier than those little individual spacers that I have right now. As it is right now it spins really nicely. I'm very happy with uh, how rigid everything is. I think it's going to be really good and it's honestly not that heavy. I haven't weighed it but I don't think it weighs that much compared to uh, any other option I can think of for building up a z-axis from scratch and I'm really happy with how well it went together. Uh, next thing is to get it up mounted onto the x-axis uh, rail and play around with it a little bit. Alright so we've got my 123 block here and we got the test dial indicator uh, connected up to the x-axis and I'm just going to go around and check around around the entire table and see what kind of accuracy and hopefully you can see the dial uh, a little bit better so we're starting in the upper left hand corner I believe of the machine uh, let's just check out how it goes on the y-axis from here so I'm just gonna t use the same block and I'm gonna just fit it underneath there so So we're about thousandths and a half off from the back to the front. That's fairly good. Now we're going to move along here on the x-axis, the front right. We're about two thousandths off there from the back. Now we're going to check out the back right. And we're about, about one and a half ish off there. So that's pretty darn good as far as I'm concerned. And let's go back to the starting point, and see if we can maintain some repeatability. And we're about a, about a half thousandths, a little hair over a half thousandths there. So not bad. As far as I'm concerned, not bad at all. Now, I have had some complaints or criticism about using the MDF as a as a measuring surface, just because, you know, it's wood or, well, it's mostly glue, but it's kind of wood still, it's not metal. It isn't the perfect surface to be testing on. However, that being said, I'm just trying to get it the best I can. And what I'm using these uh, these little tests like this one to, to really show me is that it isn't horribly off. For me it's still worthwhile to do these little tests and to show where it's actually working. Yeah so anyways that's pretty much it as far as this goes. I'm really really happy with how it, it 
has turned out is as far as I'm concerned a, a pretty solid z-axis and it's very lightweight for how strong it I think it's going to be and I'm pretty happy with it so anyways hopefully you like the video don't forget to hit that thumbs up it always helps me out just to know that I'm doing good and you like how the video came together and if there's anything that you'd like to add I always am happy to see people comment on the video if you haven't already you can subscribe to the channel and keep up with this project and anything else that I'm doing and with that see you later